Today is March, Sunday, March the 8th. We're doing an oral history interview with Randy Taylor. The interviewers' names are Cal Goff and Randall Kumba. And we need to, for you to tell us your name, where you live, and how long you've lived there, approximately. <laughs> My name is Randy Taylor. My first name is David. I go by Randy. Mm. Uh, I live at 673 Brownwood Avenue Southeast, Atlanta, Georgia, 30316. And I've been living there more than 20 years. And that's in the East Atlanta? East Atlanta. Okay. East Atlanta Village, the oasis of cool. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. All right. Okay, now I'll, I'm going to uh, state a, a list of things that I want you to get to, but I can go back and read them again because you can't remember them all. It's about your family background. So um, we want you to briefly describe your family background, the origin and birthplace of your grandparents and parents, um, when you were born, whether you have siblings, and who, if so, what they are, um, your partnership history, <clears throat> and a couple of experiences from childhood that you think have a, had a profound effect on either your values or your personality or what your passions are, or the person that you are today. So, to go back to the beginning of that, what's your family background? Where were your folks from? Family background. My my mother is, uh, she's a southern uh, gentle woman uh, from? from Atlanta, uh, grew up in Atlanta. She went to Atlanta Girls School uh, and her school, uh, and she was in, uh, what's the area of town, it's over near the waterworks, mm -hmm. where the waterworks is, on the west side of town, on the west side of town. Did you turn this on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so might speak up a little bit. Okay. And this uh, is like this. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and her, her family, her father was uh, a cotton farmer originally, and then he went off. He was in World War One, and uh, he basically was teaching uh, the soldiers how to use machine guns, which was a new invention back. Uh, and uh, uh, the go going to France really uh, made an impression on him because he'd never really been out of uh, he never even, I don't think he'd ever even seen the ocean before. Uh, and then he, so her family was from around here from uh, uh, from Austale oh, uh -huh. area, and that's where the the family farm was. His his father had a farm there. And that, that side of the family goes back to the seven, early 1700s when they came over the years. The, the Ophantagans, which became the, the Fagans. Mm -hmm. uh, and so my mother was a Fagan. Okay. And they were, they were property owners in Madison, Georgia. That's going back four generations. Mm -hmm. And then owned a farm. Uh, uh, they owned a piece of property that is. They had a log cabin, which is which was where the, now the Canner Building now stands in downtown Atlanta. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And then they moved out of that because Atlanta was getting too big, and they moved out to the country. Well, but Martha's Field was getting too big. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have all this genealogical so information about that. I'm kind of the family historian oh. for my family, mm -hmm. and so. Stop me if I'm getting too much of this stuff. Okay. Uh, the other side of my family, my father's side, is uh, from Virginia. Well, his mother's side of the family is from Virginia, in the mountains in Virginia. Uh, they're uh, Scotch, Irish, Germans. Uh, my uh, uh, his his grandfather was a Herman, and his father was referred to as the SOB from the north. As in Virginia? Uh, well, no, he, they were in Virginia, uh -huh. but he was the SOB from the north. But when I did the family history, I found that he was really from Louisiana, from New Orleans area. Uh -huh. And he was a captain. I think he was a captain with the Union soldiers. Oh, okay. And so that's why he was referred to as the SOB from the north. Okay. And he lived in West Virginia. 
Which so were you there. born in Austell or? I was born in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. My parents, my parents, uh, my father was living on Page Avenue. <laughs> okay. Okay, right here. He yeah. was renting. He was renting from a from a homeowner on Page when he was working, and I had a blind date with my mother, and so so they met. And oh. my mother was working for the title company in downtown Atlanta. Wow. So these houses were here that long ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, then they met, and his job took him to Richmond, and that's where I was born. And then they came back to Atlanta, and then they went to Chattanooga, and then back to Atlanta. Did you do you have any memories of anywhere but Atlanta? Uh, uh, Chattanooga. Yeah. A lot of elementary years were in Chattanooga. Okay. Well, so how about siblings? I have one brother who is four years younger than me, and we were always very competitive. He was the sports kind of jock kind of person, mm -hmm. and I was not. Okay. And he mostly won everything, even though he was younger than me, so it was kind of a disgrace to me. Uh -huh. And even my, my best friend, who was my age, there was one point in our, we, we all hung out together, all the neighborhood kids. There was mm -hmm. one girl there, a Carol, and uh, sometimes they needed another girl, so I would play another girl. Okay. Okay, so when we were playing, you know, those kind of things. And Carol and I played a lot together. Mm -hmm. And my brother and uh, Greg, my friend that was my age, played a lot together. And there was one point where Greg had to make a decision whether I was his friend or my brother Ted was his friend and chose Ted. Okay. I mean, that was really, that was hard on me. And where is Ted now? Ted is in Moultrie, Georgia. Okay. Well, right now he's at Mother's House. Okay. Okay. For the night. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, um, how about your partnership history? Partnership history. Uh, for quite, I was, uh, when I first came out, mm -hmm. when I first came out, I was working uh, at the Fulton County, uh, uh, Fulton County Training Center for the Developmentally Dis uh, Disabled Kids. And uh, I had my girlfriend from college was Beth, and Beth and I were really we were really close. And I remember calling Beth and calling her up and telling her, and I said, Beth, I, I just want you to know that I believe I'm more interested in men than women. And she said, Well, I'm more interested in women than men. So it's like we kind of knew before and you know, yeah. work things out. Okay, so. You want to talk about your coming out process first, and then the pa partnership stuff. What, yeah, that? I think because that order kind of okay. makes more sense right. to me. Uh, see, and the coming out was uh, uh, it, it wasn't very difficult. I felt like I had a lot of support. So what what was, age were you when this happened? I was after college, the okay. year after college. And where did you go to college? I went to the University of Georgia. Uh -huh. And uh, all the friends that I hung out with, the majority of those friends, they ended up coming out later too. Oh. Okay, so it's like we, we kind of we found each other. Uh -huh. And then, but we didn't weren't admitting anything while we were in college, but later we did. Okay. And what, did you major in college and what in art, you? Uh, graphic design? Okay. All right. Okay, so the coming out thing. Coming out thing, it, like I say, it wasn't, I was pretty secretive, but, but I had my friends, and with my friends, I was pretty open. And were you already living in Atlanta? This, I was living in Atlanta. And had, and had that job at that place? I had that job, and I was living with two other men. One man I was ferociously in love with, oh. and the other man was, he was just too straight for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, and we all had worked together at the, what was then called the Georgia Retardation Center. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Ronnie is the one I was in love with, and just, he wouldn't, he wouldn't respond to anything. I think I scared him by letting him know how I felt, and he, he ended up moving out with the woman who was living below us, mm -hmm. and they moved away. Mm -hmm. He later came out, and I was involved with the threesome with him, that's another story. Oh. Okay, but that's, which didn't... So it wasn't unrequited forever? No, no, oh. but, but, so... But it, it was not nice. Oh, it was the drama. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it was another drama. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then Beth, Beth ended up, uh, so I came out myself then, and was coming up to others and with Beth. And then so Beth had, she was at the University of Georgia, and she, she was hooking up with the feminists there. And so she had, she knew a, uh, a woman who was uh, 
Stanley, who's now head of the Women's Studies in, in North Dakota or somewhere. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and she had a, a roommate, Art, and so Beth decided to connect me up with Art. And so we met at Sweet Gum Head. Okay. Okay, and then I ended up going home with Art, and that was my sexual coming out. Mm -hmm. And this was shortly after college? Yes, probably a year after In college. Atlanta? In Atlanta. Okay. And then, did y'all move in to each other? No, no, no. no, no. 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 He, was oh. in, he was in Athens and I was in Atlanta. Okay. No, we did not move in with each other. Okay. Uh, and then that, it, it was just, it was like, he felt like he, he was responsible for me because he brought me out mm -hmm. and these kind of things. And it was like, no, no, no thank you. Uh -huh. I don't want anybody to be responsible for me. Okay. So that didn't last very long. Uh -huh. Uh, especially after he sat on a chair of mine and broke it, and that just you, know, you can't do that to my furniture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh well, black mark there. Right. I know, I know. I, it's just, it's <laughs> the craziest things happen with people. Uh, so, so Bath ended up connecting me with art, and that that was. It's, this is funny. Do we know what year sort of this is? Uh, the early seventies. This would be seventy-three. Okay. I think. All right. And you were still living with Beth? No, I was not living with oh, Beth. Okay. I was living with these two guys, with Ronnie and oh, okay. Okay, another guy. Uh, and then Ronnie, when Ronnie moved out, that left me with this, the, the straight guy, and then we ended up getting an apartment together in Midtown, uh, which, was, which was kind of strange because it was one of those shotgun apartments. There was a living room, a kitchen, my bedroom, then his bedroom. So he had to walk through my bedroom to get to his bedroom. And I remember the first time he came walking through and I was in bed with a man and he was like, okay. He's like, mm -hmm. And so, but we, we, we were good friends, mm -hmm. even though he was straight. Mm -hmm. How long did you live in Midtown? Uh, lived there about a year. Okay. And then got a house uh, with four of us. He, sta he stayed, uh, me and Harley Strickland, who you know Harley? I've heard of him. Heard of Harley? Yeah. Harley was incredible for me. Because? Uh, he was, uh, he, I met Harley, I was doing art and presenting art and he, he bought one of my paintings at an art show. Mm -hmm. And then he, ended up, when I was in college still, he invited me to come to his place and I, he would meet with me. He'd come to, he'd come to the University of Georgia and when I had openings and shows. Mm -hmm. He was really supportive of me uh, and he was, uh, and then he had a lover, which was Dale, and he and Dale, I, I remember the first night I went and stayed at their house, I just, I just thought, they're going to just come in here and attack me, you know? <laughs> I was thinking that all night long, this was, <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, but I was game for anything uh -huh. at the same time. I was afraid and game, yeah. you know, all at the same time, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, they were very dear, mm -hmm. and so, um, uh, so yes, yeah, so 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 Harley was very supportive, and I felt like he he was he kept me where my family was not supportive. He was my family, mm -hmm. he had an older man, older than me, mm -hmm. but very very kind. He a therapist. Uh, he was he was quite wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, but his 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 partner Dale, you know they they split off, and so Dale moved in with me. Okay. Well, not we shared a we shared a house together. Mm -hmm. And it was Dale and uh, and th the other guy. I can't remember his name. Was this in Midtown this, also? This or? was on Briarcliff. Okay. And it was Dale and the other guy and this uh, and another straight man who was really gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, this 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 bizarre poet. Okay. And mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. a big house. We each had our own bedroom and own bath. Wow. It was just one of those big mansions on Briarcliff that was dilapidated and falling down. Oh, okay. And we called it the Briarcliff House. Okay. And we would have big parties and we'd throw, have plays and performances and all these other things would yeah. happen in the Briarcliff House. And this was mid 70s ish? This was uh, later, 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 yeah. Let's see, 73, 74, 75. Back late 70s. Okay. Late 70s when all that was happening. Okay. And so. Um, so from there, uh, let's see, from there I was, I was working at the training center and working at the training center, I was also doing illustration work for newspapers, for the Gazette. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, while I was working at the training center, I met Kay Watkins. Yes. Mm. Okay, so I met Kay Watkins. And then Kay Watkins said, do you need some extra money? And I said, yes. And she said, well, uh, some of us are, 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 are going to go and work at the fair when the fair came. So we, we, we were ticket takers at the Southeastern Fair. The Southeastern Fair? The Southeastern fair? Southeastern in fair. Lakewood? In Lakewood. <laughs> <laughs> so we were ticket takers to the Southeastern Fair in Lakewood. Okay. And that's where I met Jack. He was a ticket taker too. Oh my God! What a wonderful story. <laughs> so, okay. So we went there. Okay. And yeah, that's that's where where Jack and I met. Okay. And then uh, then Jack and I started dating. And then he was living with Judy Ailey, at the time. And Judy lives around the corner over here. Okay. Uh, with uh, <laughs> small world. Small world. And. Then, um, I want to find out what house your dad lived in on Page, if you know. I'll get the address. Okay. 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 I have it written down somewhere. All right. <laughs> yeah, all these people right around here. Uh, and uh, so, so uh, Jack and Judy were living together, and we kicked Judy out, and I moved in. Uh -huh. And then, uh, oh, Judy was she dated? Uh, Now, was she an artist or not? Uh, no, she was an educator. Judy and I started a school together. Uh -huh. uh, we had an elementary school right, in uh, Little Five Points for two years. Kind of an alternative school really? for kids. Yeah, yeah. okay. Really good. Uh, and then she was, dating, she was dating this woman at the time. Mm -hmm. And that woman ended up being uh, a best friend of a man who just moved to town whose name was Russell Cravens. Oh, okay. And it wasn't, it wasn't uh, Kathy. Kathy. It was Kathy. Kathy Gross. Oh. Kathy Gross. She was dating Kathy Gross. Yes. And her name was? Uh, Judy Ailey. Okay. I guess I never met her. Okay, so you met Raven. Oh, yeah, so I met Raven. And Raven said I was the first man he met in Atlanta. Okay. Okay, through Julie. So I mean, through Kathy. Through Kathy Ka Gross. Kathy, okay. Through Kathy Gross. And were Kathy and... This alien person living together? I don't think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they were both involved with Alpha House. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are we coming up now to the the radical fairy things at uh, 78, 79? Right. Were you there yet? Yes. Okay. Okay. So so with all that happening in. Let me see this. Is. And they can edit out anything okay. that happens, so don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. So we were there, and where were we? We were, I was trying to, <laughs> to figure out how close we had gotten to, to the, the radical fairies. To the gatherings at the First E Church. Oh, right. That you were at. And I, I didn't know if you had come because you were already connected with these people, or if that was a an early experience with that group for you? Well, with, with Jack, see, Jack, Jack, Jack and then Franklin. Knew each other as therapists. Knew each other as therapists. Oh. And so I became involved with that circle that Franklin was, was dealing with. Okay. Okay, so you have history with that, yeah. too. Yeah. So, so that was my first connection with that. Okay. And then from that, we started the coming out group, which was, were you involved? Mm -hmm. Yes, you were involved. I keep... Yeah. It's all this history. Yeah. Okay, and so we did the coming out group stuff. Yeah. And then and then the fairy stuff started. There was a connection with the fairy stuff. Uh -huh. But before that happened, I, my connection with the fairies was outside that. Oh, okay. And my connection with fairies was I was doing uh, classes in, in music workshops at, uh, oh, the school up in North Carolina, the, it's a traditional school, they teach... Oh, John C. Campbell? John C. Campbell Folk School. Oh. So I was t taking Orff Schule for music education workshops there. Mm -hmm. And so every Friday night they have, a, or Saturday night they have a contra dance. Yeah. And so I went to the contra dance and there I met Alan Traxler. Who, does, who is that? I don't uh, remember this name. Okay, so I met Alan Traxler. And so Al and I... Was it Traxler or Troxler? Troxler. Troxler, maybe. yeah. And so he and I hit it off at this dance. And then he asked me to dance. And I said, okay. You know, so every, that there were no 
gay couples dancing. Mm -hmm. So he asked me to dance, and so we were the lead couple in the Queen's Jig, mm -hmm. which I thought was very appropriate. <laughs> And okay. so, so we danced, and everything was fine. And he came to visit me, and so, and then when he came to visit me, he said, "You are such a fairy," uh, and I took it as an offensive kind mm -hmm. of thing for him mm -hmm. to say to me. But then he explained it to me. I said, "You're right. I am a fairy." Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's like that was my, that was my introduction to fairies. Okay. It was through Alan. Okay. So let me just make sure I've got this right in my brain now. I had forgotten about that coming out group sequence. That was before. The first E Church thing. I think so. Oh, okay. And so that was. That's that's how my memory has it. It could be the case. I don't really remember how that got started. Because we were meet. We weren't meeting at the E Church. We were meeting at Franklin's. Well, we met in each other's houses. In each other's houses yeah. to plan it. So that was the Terry Barfield, Dave Bryant, uh, those two guys who lived together, the doctor and who became a doctor. Mm -hmm. What were their names? I don't know. And. Franklin and Raven and Dan Dandelion was not part no, of that. Not part of that. It seemed like there were some other people too. Jim Struve. Jim Struve. Okay. Yeah. See, Jim and Jack were close friends, probably closer than Franklin and Jack. Because of the therapy thing. There was some with the bridge. Ah, okay. And that was the bridge connection. The okay. bridge always convoluted into this whole stuff. Too. Okay. Okay. So, um, to talk a little bit about the coming out part in terms of your family part. What, what you said they were not so supported. Is no, that an understatement weren't. or what? No, they were not supportive. They were not very supportive. Uh, my, my parents had a house on Lake Hartwell. And so I went with my mother up to Lake Hartwell. And uh, she knew that Beth and I had been dating. And it was even after college, we were still seeing each other, and she knew that we were still in communication with each other and things. And so then uh, I went with her up to the, to the cabin, and she was asking about Beth and how Beth was doing. She was getting around to, when are we getting married, that kind of thing. And I said, well, look, uh, we're not going to get married and because Beth is a lesbian. And, and she looked at me and said, and I'm gay. <laughs> so, so that's... And so her comment to me was, well, uh, if, if you're going to need any help, we'll be glad to pay for any therapist and any kind of therapeutic work you're going to need. Okay. And so, so then, then after that, uh, my father called and had, wanted to have a meeting with me, of course. And I, yeah, I didn't know how thing, that this was when everything was going to happen. And my father traveled a lot, so we had a meeting in a hotel. They, my parents at that time had moved to... Uh, uh, down to uh, uh, South Georgia. Madison? No. No, South Georgia, South just north of Moultrie and Albany, uh -huh. Americas, Georgia. Oh my goodness. They moved to Americas, Georgia. That's a tiny little town. That's where they're, my father's, house, my father's business in Plains, Georgia, right, right behind the Carter's house. Okay. Just that was right when Carter was running for president. Uh -huh. uh, and so, so my father had a meeting with me in, in a hotel room asking me about what he, and his comment to me was well I knew I knew this was happening but I just didn't hadn't brought it up to you I said well it would have been nice if you had talked with me earlier because it might have helped me some mm. so uh, but he hadn't and he said I just want to when you know that there are more ways to do it with a woman oh. okay yes. <laughs> Then I started, after I left, I started counting and said, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that, that, was, that was the big, the, and then, uh, then not too long after that, the, uh, the Bryant stuff started coming up. Okay. Let me back up just a little bit to your brother. How's, okay, my how's brother. he with all My brother's that? supportive. Okay. And did he know early on? About uh, me. He never, we never talked about it. Okay. Maybe did or not. All right. mm -hmm. Okay, so Anita Bryant comes in 1978, mm -hmm. and there's that whole hoopla. Yeah, and so, so Mother started spouting all this Anita Bryant stuff when I was visiting them one time, and I said, I don't need this, and I'm leaving. Uh -huh. So I left, uh, and I didn't talk to them for two years. Oh my, well that's a pretty traumatic sounding. Mm -hmm. 
But it, I think it was the healthiest thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we're up to the late 70s now. The late 70s. All right. And so that's with the fairies. Uh -huh. The fairies starting. And so with the fairies, we were having the fairy circles and we were working on RFD. Mm -hmm. We did the work on RFD, did a couple of issues with that. And your little guys, you made your little guys. Right. Well, the little guys were for the conference. There were four GSs. Oh, really? I thought you did that for, for RFG first. No. Oh, maybe that was just an ad in an RFG. Maybe. For the maybe. Okay. But no, that, that was done specifically for GSV. Okay. So how did you first learn about GSV? Do you, was it just part of that Raven-y thing? Oh, it was being with Raven. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, he recruited you to help with that project? Oh, we were working on a flyer. Okay. okay. I remember distinctly we were in his house, his apartment that was uh, the one that was next to the park and upstairs. It was in a red house. He had upstairs Near to Cab Avenue? Uh, oh, in Inman Park or some other place? It was... Uh, near the park, what park? Right, near uh, Jimmy Carter, the... Presidential Park? Presidential Park. Right? Okay. Yeah, it was on the dead end, the dead end street right there. At the end of the okay. Right there. I don't remember that. Was park. that Inman Park? He lived on Delta, which is up near between Inman yeah, it, Park, it Edgewood. Inman park. It was Inman Park right next to the camp. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's where it was. Yeah, it was yes. way up. Yeah, and up high. Okay. And so we're in the back of the house, it was like a sun porch in the back, and that's where he had all his drawing stuff and things. Mm -hmm. And I remember distinctly sitting, sitting at the his drawing board, uh, and he was there, and we were talking about some in images that we might need to put in here, and mm -hmm. so then I just started sketching out the people. Yeah. Okay. That's what Did you, didn't you do drawings, too, for the RFD? That we I did drawings for RFD, too. Okay. And I remember that being at Terry Barfield's house yes. at least once, if not more than we once. We met there. I remember meeting at... At Franklin's, uh, probably, too. Franklin's and at... Wayne Sizemore. Okay. And then see Jeff Glauser worked on that too. Mm -hmm. And Harvey and, and Harvey. Um, I don't know who else. Okay. Right. So. Um, so there was all these RFD connections, and then there was the connections with the with uh, the other map, Short Mountain. Oh yeah. Now did you go up there? Yes. Did you go up there before? That was before GSV started, right? right? Yes. Okay, and. What was that like for you? Uh, it was very freeing. Uh -huh. Very, yeah, yeah. I, I, it was like, yes, I, I like this kind of community. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like I was sold. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you ever go back up there, or running water, or anything? Uh, I did running water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And running water was much more. Uh, it's, it was closed. It was like closed. Uh, I felt like short man was more clickish kind of thing. You had to be a certain way to, to get into certain things. But I felt that running water was much more inclusive. Oh, uh huh. Okay. It was a smaller group, and it wasn't wasn't permanent. Nobody was really permanent. Uh -huh. And that was Michael and uh, uh, and uh, Peter Kendrick and mm -hmm. Rocco. Rocco. And, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit more about either Running Water or, or uh, Short, Mountain. Short Mountain, just those experiences and how they preceded GSV, mm -hmm. so I don't, I mean, a lot of people are not going to know about those places and since you were there. Just talk about what, the, what it well, was like. Part, part of the experience at Short Mountain is like... Uh, Big word they were using was being anarchistic. Yeah. Okay, and kind of rebellious, and rebelling against just about everything. Yeah. Rebelling against <laughs> if there was if there was something that somebody stated, it was then uh, the short mount's purpose was to rebel against it. Yeah. And so, so, so it's like you mean beyond gender roles and things. Be, just beyond everything. the gender roles. Yeah. If the government is there's one person at the head, no, it's not going to be one person at the head. Uh -huh. Okay, there'll be everybody's making the decision at the uh -huh. same time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a collaborative kind of thing. Rather yeah. than that. And the theater group I was working with was a collaborative thing too. It's like and Jack was involved with the theater group that I was working oh, with, so, okay. and Kay was too. So it's like all this, it all kind of things start rolling in together. Uh -huh. 
Uh, yeah, it was okay. Uh, so you went up there, you set up camp. Uh, Did you go with Jack, or sometimes with him, or ever with him? Uh, this was not with him. Okay. Was he still living with you? Uh, or, no, no, I don't think. No. Okay. No. All right. I moved to the Briarcliff house. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. No, that was chill. Jack was after the Briarcliff house. I, I moved in with, uh, uh, with a mime. A nameless mime. <laughs> nameless mime. A soundless nameless. Mime. What was her her name? Her name. She ended up marrying an uh, uh, a big uh, corporate VP uh, oh, really? with a TV company <laughs> that she met in New York while she was doing mime on the streets. Really? Like, yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. But I moved in with her um, in a house that behind the house where Jack was living. Okay. So you. <laughs> When you went to Short And across the street from K. Oh, okay. When, when you, it sounds like you were never for very long out of some core group of artists, teachery. Uh, they were always there. Okay. And um, some of them were gay men who, who knew this fat rock fair thing. And so, but you were not in a relationship, or you were when you went to Short Mountain and to No, Rainwater. I was not when I went to Short Mountain. Okay. That was not when I went to okay. Rainwater. Water. Okay. Okay. Um, but I, after Jack, it was like a series of, it was like serial monogamy yeah. that was going in this. Okay. So, why don't you finish your relationship history then with, after Jack, there Jack, was... There was there was, period of nobody. Yeah, well, it was it was interspersed with somebody. Yes. Okay. A series of. But none of them moved in with you. Or none you of them in. moved in with me until David. Okay. And I met David. David was living in the same household with Raven. He was. Yes. What? Who's David? Oh no! Excuse me, David. Uh, no, there's, there's a different kind. Of, uh, Raven was living with Ron Rins. Yes, on Sterling. On Sterling. Yes. Ron Renz was dating David. Okay. So I met David, I guess, at a, at a dinner at their house. Mm -hmm. And then, then David mentioned that he would always wanted to go to Disney World. And I did too. Really? Yes. Okay. And so David and I went to Disney World <laughs> together, camping. Okay. Oh, and, camping. Camping. Okay. <laughs> And so uh, then I found David in my sleeping bag. Uh -huh. Okay, so that, that, that started David and I. And so uh, it was amicable with Ron, okay? Okay, okay. yes, okay. And David was living in uh, Virginia Highlands, a basement apartment. What was his last name? Uh, Kamiji. Kamiji. Oh, David Kam yes, 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 yes. That's right. That's a whole chunk of... Time. I forgot about him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and because he came to some of the GSP things, didn't yes. he? Yes. Yes, he did. All right. All right. So we're we're with you and David, but you didn't, or you did move into each with each other. We did. Okay. We did. Mm -hmm. And where was that house? It's my house. In East Atlanta. East Atlanta. Okay. All and, right. and somewhere in there, there was there was quite a there was a long relationship with Stan Street, and I met him at a GSB potluck. Okay, I'm not okay. remembering him, but Stan Street, the name I do. Stan remember. Street. He was he was into banking and uh, uh, computer programs and things like that. Uh huh. Okay, and then after David, when did that end? Soon or late or that that ended. Oh, it was, it was over years. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, it had to be at least two, maybe three years, because we kept going to Hawaii to visit his parents. Mm -hmm. And so I know of two, maybe three trips. And it was interesting because my uh, my parents went to Hawaii, and when they went to Hawaii, my father played golf with his father. On purpose. Yes. Oh. Okay. They contacted each other, and then uh, my father and his father did a round of golf. 
I thought it would have been interesting to be a fly on the wall <laughs> for that. That's interesting. Okay, so David's father was a golfer. Was a golfer. Okay. Well, what? where's David now? David is in um, Portland, Oregon. Okay. And see, our big breakup came because he was having trouble here because of, uh, he was working for the, he was a physical therapist, working for the Veterans Administration, the Henry Hospital. And his work with the Veterans Administration, he'd come upon people who were, um, uh, uh, that they had served in the, uh, in the, in the Air Force, Army, and all those things out in the Pacific, yeah. and they didn't want a jab working on them. Yeah. And so they were basically, ha he was having a lot of kind of that, that ethnicity kind of problems and racial profiling yeah. of him, and he, it was just easier for him to be on the West Coast. Oh, okay. Because there's less of that uh, antagonism okay. there about Japanese people. So he moved so he from moved. here to Portland. And he was going to, he was, we were going to move together. Oh. And so I, I, it was going to be really hard for me because I was really established in my business, which meant contracted mm -hmm. business all over the place with all the schools and be, it being reestablishing myself there, which would be very difficult. But I said, I would do this. And so he just, so we we're going to make a trip out there to look for houses and do the, all those kind of things. And, and he had already found a house and put down a contract on it without even asking me. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, this isn't going to work. Mm. So I, I cut it off. Okay. Okay. Are y'all still in contact at all? Yes. Yeah. Every now and then he comes, he was he was in town, I think, last year or so, mm -hmm. doing something at Emory. He brought me back some smoked salmon. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> okay. So exit David. You stayed in Atlanta. And then... Oh. See, had you, know. you didn't, you did have your house by now in oh, East, yeah, East I, Atlanta? I, I had my house before David. Okay. Well, right, right at the point of David, that's when I moved out of, uh, well, I was living with McBeebe at that time, and that was in a lesbian household who were all you involved. You moved a lot. About every year I moved. Uh -huh. And I was living with McBeebe uh, with all these lesbians, and I was kind of like the, the one gay man that was like okay with Alpha House, uh -huh. because... I was more lesbian than I was gay, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, and so, so that was weird. That was that was. But they still gave you trouble if you tried to walk into the like Alpha House, right? Uh, I, I remember the inside of Alpha House. I, w I went there one time with my wife, who mm -hmm. uh, who was doing some kind of interview or something, and I went with her into the living room, and it was real clear, really fast, that I was not supposed to be trotting the boards of the house. Wow. Well, I went in, I, I didn't feel like rejected or Really? Anything. Okay. Because mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people had interesting experiences in Keras even back right. then. Well, yeah. see, I did the first logo for Keras. You did? Wow. Mm -hmm. So Amazing. it's like <laughs> the first sign they had over their, over their store was my, my mm -hmm. sign. Okay. So I was kind of... Was I, that I, a I was circular thing? Was no, it? it was a woman. Oh, okay. Like a, a, a Grecian a goddess woman. Thing. A goddess kind of. Holding okay. something. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Interesting that they ask you to do that. Because mm -hmm. um, I was friends with that group of women. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So, David's moved to Portland. You're still in your house. Yes. Who came uh, next? See, I don't remember. Oh, but well then, uh, that was been. I think Stan would come after that. Okay. Stan Street. Now, I'm looking at the longer ones. There right. was Stan Street and there was Richard Adler. Can we talk about Richard? Uh, Richard, uh, Richard was, uh, he was with the, uh, uh, the, the Jew, the gay Jewish group. Uh -huh. Okay, he was kind Beth of, Beth Beth uh -huh. And so I would go to their meetings with Richard and he was, he was kind of one of the upper, upper standing people uh -huh. helping organize that whole group. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, Rich and I were together for some time, and we were in a, we had a, kind of like an eating club that was Rich and I and two other, two women. Mm -hmm. I think Susan were they from the congregation, or? No. No. No, just other women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judy might have been one of the women. Mm -hmm. I'm having, I've had blanks. All right. Uh, so, so I was with Richard for for quite a, for a number of years, I think. Uh -huh. And 
uh, and then that ended. Okay. Okay, that ended. Uh, Richard, there was a mutual parting. Mm -hmm. Are we? At uh, and Ri oh, Richard, it got interesting. Richard ended up moving to. Uh, after that, uh, it seems like it was after that. Then I was with Wayne Sizemore. Okay, and then I was with Jeff Bell, and that 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 didn't work out very good. I was like, I hated Jeff Bell for what he was doing. To me. Yeah. And then, then uh, Richard hooked up with Jeff Bell, and he announced that he was moving to Seattle. And I said, with who? I didn't know he knew Jeff Bell. Wow. And so he ends up moving there with Jeff Bell, and I said, this, this was not going to work out well, because I know how Jeff Bell operates. <laughs> and sure enough, oh. okay, as soon as Jeff Bell got to Seattle, he broke up with Richard. Oh. And so now Richard is in uh, South Dakota. Why is anybody in South Dakota? He got a job at the college. Okay. All right. I had not heard about Jeff Bell. I mean, I hadn't thought about him at all, but I knew him somehow, I guess through you. Yeah, was, he was he in the fairy he, circle? A little bit. He was living with Wayne Sizemore. Oh, maybe that's why. Okay. Were they ever partners? or? No? I don't think so. Okay. All right. I don't was think so. Wayne living in East Atlanta at that point? Uh, no, because Wayne, Wayne moved to East Atlanta when he hooked up with Calvin Owens. Uh -huh. And see, Calvin Owens was my roommate. We were not sexual, but he was just, he was a renter. Uh -huh. Renter with me. Oh, okay. And then Calvin moved out to be with Wayne. <laughs> we need diagrams for I you. know, I know, <laughs> I know, it gets for it's, it's so, but it's really interesting. It, it is interesting. Yeah, it is. And see, see, there's a Calvin Owens, and there's a different connection with him because he was with John Young, okay, for a period of time. And another partner I had was John Herman. And John Herman and John Young ended up becoming business partners and then partners. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and they're in Florida. They're mm -hmm. in the antique business. Uh -huh. uh, and then, and then. Yeah, it's, it gets, gets really interesting. So, Cal, was, Calvin Owens was a gay man? Yes. And, and was he, was he or is he with Wayne still? Uh, no. No. no but he's they not, he's living by himself in East Atlanta. Okay, he's still here. Yes. Okay. And he, he was friends also with Max Clore. Oh, Lord. And Max is another whole story. What, which is? Oh, jeez. Uh, and this is later. This is after these things. But Max and I were good friends uh, because of gardening. Okay, so we did a lot of gardening together and did a lot of we went to garden shows and uh, went, went dug up plants, you know, did, did rescue of plants and mm -hmm. did a lot of stuff. And was Max part of the um, the get the he, he was fairy gathering? Yes, yeah. yes, he was. And he, so you knew him before Max bought a house in East Atlanta. Um, you probably had the first house, and then Wayne, and then him. Right, right. Okay. I had the first one. Okay. So you met Max probably during that RF. I mean that, yeah, that RFD right. era. Yeah. And, and I bought a house. Terry Barfield and I were looking for a house together to share. Uh oh. We were looking for a duplex. I didn't know that. That we would we would we, we thought, and we thought we found one in in in, in Men Park. Uh huh. No, a Grant Park. Yeah. And we just ended up, and then he ended up finding a house, and then I ended up finding a house. Okay. Did Terry Barfield have a... I thought he lived in an, an apartment on a Piedmont or somewhere. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, he got, got the apartment, not the house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but y'all were looking for a house together. Oh, Randy, you have... Okay. So, so there's a lot of connections in yeah, different kind of ways. Lots. This is wonderful, though. I mean, it sounds like a very rich network. I felt like it was. Yeah. yeah, I felt like it was, okay. and I felt like what uh, what happened with Raven's death to me, a lot of it fell apart. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Huh. But we're not there yet, are we? No, we're not there yet. We're to. <laughs> we we're to. We, we aren't at GSV yet, are we? No. Well, no, not quite. Um, oh, we're dealing with partnerships. Yes, partnerships. Mm. And let's see, then I got involved with a lot of two-stepping, okay, so I was dancing a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, I was dating a guy who really liked, and I thought he really liked me. Well, I had, had this other guy who was, a, who was an alcoholic, who was like, 
he was fun until I found out he was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, that, that explained a whole lot and changed a whole lot too. So, mm -hmm. And Beth and Beth and her lover and uh, uh, and me and this guy, we went off to some trip to San Francisco together. Okay. Which was it was a very pleasant trip until we came back and then I found out. I wondered why he was collecting bar uh, ephemera. Yes, okay. <laughs> there was a purpose behind it. Oh, oh. So, so that didn't work out. Uh, and this then, was after Contra. Yeah, well, the two-stepping came oh, out yes, after Contra. I, I met him through Contra. Oh, through okay. Contra dancing. Mm -hmm. And then I met this other guy through Contra dancing, and he was. Uh, I really liked him, and I thought he had a house over here in Kirkwood. Mm -hmm. He was he was working on a house and in a house. He was sharing the other house with a friend. So. Uh, and th then we were going to go on a trip together, and he told me he couldn't go on a trip because his friend was coming back. And I said, well, what's the problem? He says, well, his friend is my lover. Mm. So I was like, okay, well, great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing. <laughs> thank, yeah, thank you for finally letting me know about this. Gosh. And then, then while I was with him, I found out that, uh, that I was HIV positive. Okay. Okay. Do you know what year that was? Oh. Maybe you don't have to, but we're up to what? It, we're not in the nineties yet, and we're in the eighties. Oh 80s. yeah, well this would be. Um, this is about the same time Raven found out he was HIV positive. Okay. Because we're, I think that's that's my connection. Okay. So that's late. 80s, early 80s, 90s, yeah. or something, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so that was then after after John, after I had a, came out with the HIV, you come out with the HIV, mm -hmm. whatever you do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, basically, uh, I've had one partner since then who I met through uh, the Daylily Association. What is that? At, the people who collect day lilies, okay. Is and this was, a steampunk parallel universe? <laughs> right. You know, this was through Jeff Glauzer. It is? It's Jeff Glauzer basically hybridizes day lilies. Yeah. Okay, and so I was... Uh, Raven was into those too, yeah. I remember. That right, because, yeah. Probably through Jeff, maybe. We went to day lily farms and things. Oh, yeah, okay. Hybrid places. See, see, and I did all this with Jeff, and through Jeff, I, I went with him to St. Louis, and I met this guy, David. Oh. Okay, and so then we were dating long distance. St. Louis and Atlanta is definitely long distance, okay? Yes. And so uh, so I was with him for a, about maybe two years, okay? Mm -hmm. Long distance. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just got to be crazy doing the long distance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I still get Christmas cards from him. Mm -hmm. So that was that was maybe ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And then in September, I went to the the GSV conference of the Pat in Limbs, and that's where I met Richard. And Richard and I've been together since then. Who is Richard? Richard Dagnitz. Oh, okay, okay, Dagnitz. All right. How do you spell his name? D e g n a t. Okay, and he lives here. He lives here. And he's in the hospital. He's in the hospital. Right now. Okay, and it, but it's not life-threatening stuff. No. Okay. We got through that. It was. Okay. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's you said that's been how many years, or how long since September? Since when? since, since da David, it's been ten years since I had a partner. Okay. And but you met this guy, da uh, September. David. Okay, September. just recently. Recently. Okay. Recently. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so are y'all living together now? No. You're not? Okay. Where does he live? He lives in Sandy Springs. Okay, that's closer than St. Louis. Yes. <laughs> it's doable. Okay. So um, I'm assuming that when the GSV came up to happen, that it just sort of, you were already organically tied to the organizers, so there was no question that you would go or not go. There was no notice that I read t telling me about it. Yeah. I was in, I was, in, I was part of it. Okay. All right. Um, so could you talk about your spiritual journey, whatever that means to you, before GSV? I mean, what, what kind of, of background course. did you come out of? And 
Did you throw it out, or are you still? Uh, Methodist, okay, becoming Unitarian when I was in college. I remember going to my Methodist at the church. I was really involved with the church, and in college I was involved with the Methodist Youth, youth, youth MYF, yeah. uh, in, in, high, in high school, and then with the Methodist Center, and worked at the coffee shop. We were probably the most radical of the, the, the uh, the religious kind of organizations mm -hmm. at the University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. We had a coffee house and worked in the coffee house. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Kind of, we, I was I was hippie. Okay? Yeah. Had long hair down to down to here. And, yeah. Okay, so I was part of that whole group. Mm -hmm. uh, marched on what? You did did the protest against the Vietnam War, part of ROTC, uh, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And so then, when I got out of college, I guess it's out of college, you know, yeah, out of college, I uh, I was doing work with the Unitarians, and I remember going back to my church, and the minister said that woe be hells anybody who joins those Unitarians because they're doomed to hell and there's all this kind of stuff. And oh so, dear! And it says, well, I said, well, I don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've never gone back to that church uh -huh. or any of that that method stuff. Yeah. Uh, and so I was Unitarian, and I was I was working with their uh, preschool program and teaching preschool. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was interesting. We had a uh, we were teaching a curriculum. It had to do part of, one part of it was about the body, and so we were, were teaching these four and five year olds about our bodies. And uh, my, me and my t the teacher Susan who I was teaching with. Uh, we had a life size cut out of our bodies without any clothes on it, so we could point to different parts and tell what the parts of the bodies are. Mm -hmm. So this is. So very a, progressive. Very, very progressive. Very progressive. If not <laughs> frightening. <laughs> I know. A bit. And people, people say, yes, I tell people about today, we couldn't do that today. It's just, <laughs> right. I know. There's a mm -hmm. lot of things you could do back then you can't do anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we were doing it. And mm -hmm. I, was, I was doing it. Okay. Uh, so from there went to uh, from the Unitarians. Basically, then uh, I was doing a little work with. Uh, that probably came later. Then I think from, from Unitarians, uh, I started doing work with um, uh, uh, with NLP, neuro linguistic programming, mm -hmm. and that that basically. Uh, got me into thinking a lot about different things and how things operate and mm -hmm. such, mm -hmm. uh, religiously. Not only how to communicate with other people, but how, how everything is connected mm -hmm. and how, how you make things work. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so then was connected a little bit with the spiritual, what's now the Spiritual Living Center of Science and Mind, mm -hmm. and so I did a little that work. Mm -hmm. uh, and Judy Ailey became a, I was working with her with Science of Mind, and she was there too. Mm -hmm. uh, another guy I was dating, I hope I forgot about him, uh, the guy with three names, three first names, mm -hmm. Richard William Thomas. Okay. So, okay, so that was, that was there, so Science of Mind, then, uh, then Short Mountain and Fairydom, it became Paganism. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Pagans, and then with uh, with David, a little bit of Buddhism. Oh, was that his background? He was Buddhist Shinto Methodist. Oh, interesting. Okay, so so got a little bit of that mm -hmm. with him, and then uh, with Raven and Peter Bear walks, uh, and shamanism. Oh, and Crazy Al's in there too. So oh. add Crazy Al to the mix, mm -hmm. and I'm just a conglomeration of. All oh, this stuff. Okay. And I was looking at, uh, I've dated a, uh, let's see, a Methodist, a Jew, a, uh, a voodoo, uh, a voodoo priest. Uh, what, are these people you slept with? Or I've dated. Dated. I've okay. dated. Yeah. I've got to go mentioning him with the other things. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, so, Methodist, Buddhist, uh, American Indian, uh, I've been off the board. So, was it, <clears throat> I take it this was, you were intrigued by all of these things and kind of open to them all? Yeah, they were not traumatic for you? 
yeah. to discover or stumble no, over, no, including no. the stuff at, at GSP. Part, part of embracing things, science of mind was basically it was a way of doing doing treatment work and things that were really right in line with the NLP work that I've been studying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then the shamanism was very much Jungian. Mm -hmm. Okay, with mm -hmm. all the symbols and things, and so it, it all made sense to me okay. in one form or another. I so, no trouble with any of it. would it be fair to say that there was not um, a radical break from some previous way of looking at things through all of these things? It was just sort of all mixing it as think, it went along? I think along? the biggest radical break was from Methodism to Unitarian. Okay, which is interesting that it's from one denomination to another, not one whole tradition to another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. the, the other traditions was not okay. no problem. Okay. Um, back to running water for a bit. You talked a little bit about Short Mountain, but not too much about running water. So just mention that. And I think uh, running whatever water, memories you have. Running water is kind of like a preliminary to GSV because at running water, people would say, "I want, I want to do a talk. I want, I want to have a circle about a subject." Okay. And so, so they would kind of gather together to talk about different things, or share about different things, or maybe have that kind of experience, say, uh, let's try this. Mm -hmm. And so as a group we would try these things. That people would suggest things and we'd try them out. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it wasn't it was had a little bit more structure than Short Mountain did. Mm -hmm. uh, Short Mountain was more into ritual. Oh, okay. Kinds That's of things happening. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, you put in your time to make to make everybody's life wonderful. Uh -huh. Okay. And then figuring out who you're going to shack up with that night. Right. It going to be. There's that. And, <laughs> and which one was the, the the place with the tents? I mean, where did where was uh, the tents? Short Mountain. Short Mountain. Because okay. there wasn't indoors, enough indoor space for everybody. Okay. And I think I stayed in a tent in front of water. I did. I, no, I stayed on the porch. I think. Okay. So the first conference you went to was the first one. You were at the first one. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I recollect. Okay. I can't see why it was. Do you remember anything about that conference? Uh, I remember the uh, the gifting. What do you remember? There it is. Oh, that's it. That's okay. Is there a sto a sto a show it to the camera? <laughs> what is that? It is a porcelain egg. Okay. Okay. Do you remember the I, story or? The, the story was the whole thing about life begins there. Uh -huh. And your world begins there when you're inside the egg. Everything is dark and you don't know what's going to happen. And the egg is just getting ready to open and then the whole new world is going to be unfolded. Uh -huh. Okay. And do you remember who brought it? I have no idea. No? Okay. I have no idea. Do you, is your recollection of... But I was in, I was in charge of the group. Okay. You were a small group leader? Yeah, a small group leader. Uh, and was that not a stretch or anything that was easy for you that to do, easy. I guess? That was no problem. Okay. I think I, I, think I, was, like, I was the one who came up with a gifting idea. You were? Well, that's kind of important. Because yeah. uh, nobody could remember when it got started or how. Yeah, because I had been doing, there were some NLP workshops that I had been doing, and we did this gifting. Oh. A, a form of this. Okay. And so then I was bringing it from that to here. Well, and, thank you. And with the, <laughs> with the NLP, it was all about metaphor. Oh. And what is the metaphor that's, what's the story that's behind the gift is what is so important. Mm -hmm. The object is inconsequential. Mm -hmm. It's the, the metaphor, what the object represents mm -hmm. is what's important. So the gifting was, was at the first conference? I didn't remember that. I thought that came later. Or maybe it was the second. Okay. I don't know. Okay. So, true or false, going to the conference, the first conference that you went to, was sort of more of some sameness for you. It was not a revelation or yeah. any of that stuff. No. Okay. Um, was it a pretty positive thing? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. And you were in or not in a relationship at that point? When you went to the conference? Uh, not with anybody there okay. that I can remember. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. no. Um, I don't 
think I've ever been to the mountain that I was in a relationship with anybody. Okay. What about um at the mountain? The, the novelty to you, it, I mean, so for a lot of people that we talked to, this was like, well, nothing like nothing they'd ever been to before, but for you it was not threatening or whatever, so we don't need to talk about Yeah, about and, it felt like, and it felt like what Raven was getting at wanted to put more of a structure to this investigation of our spirit. Uh -huh. uh, and so running water was, it didn't have the structure and short mountain definitely had no structure. <laughs> right. So you're going from anti-structure. You're going from anti-structure, <laughs> community with no structure, mm -hmm. to community with some structure, and to community with uh, intention on structure. Mm -hmm. And do you find one of those three atmospheres more congenial to you personally? I kind of half. I'm halfway between running water and GSB. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, okay, so you have any particular memories about the, what, what it felt like to be there? Did you feel like um, it was more of the same, or you know, this is a nice weekend, or did you feel like, oh, this is really oh, pretty I, amazing? Or I, you know, one memory, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's like, as you're asking this, I, I have memories of some people trying to make sure things are kept on time, mm. and I didn't care, mm -hmm. okay, if they were happening on time or not. We just knew an order that they were going, and that's what the yeah. thing that was important, but to be on time, I, I didn't care about that one. Uh -huh. And I was just kind of laughing at them, I <laughs> keep everything on time. Okay. I just knew we had to be, we need to be in, you know, for, for the meals on time. Right, the meals. But that was, that was about it. Okay. Um, well, as you know, that's been a, a long-standing controversy over now, structure I, versus unstructure. Well, yes, I know. And see, I, I prefer now, if I had my preference, it would be the, uh, the spring conference over the fall conference, just because it's less structure. The spring over the fall because of that. Okay, interesting. That's for me, but people need the structure, and that's fine. They okay. can go to the fall. I want Randall to ask you what he's getting at. Here. Okay. He talked about Raven's um, kind of uh, intention about investigating our spirit, our gay spirit. How were some of those things done? And how did that happen? And what was that like? Well, I think part of it was looking at the first speakers that came. Uh, Harry Hay and James Broughton, and uh, I think Raven was a big fan of both of these these men, and made an intention that part of it was to get them there, mm -hmm. and so that's that's what happened. So and, uh, and letting uh, kind of introducing the men here to to national mentors that uh -huh. he had. Yeah. And going about it in a more deliberate way instead of just hanging out for the weekend. Right, and just having him come and talk, with, yeah. which he did at, mm -hmm. at the e church. Yeah. But that this was a more more intention about okay, let's let's get into the meat of what this is all about and mm -hmm. who we are as gay men. Mm -hmm. And what, what how is our spirit different or not? Mm -hmm. And some of the activities that facilitated that were they how did those happen? They were planned. And what were the activities like? Sort of what was those that type of structure? Oh, you'd have to talk to Andrew Raymer about that. <laughs> <laughs> were they discussion groups? Well, we or? had workshops. Right? There, were, there were workshops. Like, I mean, I know John did one on John's colors or something. Did, yes. Everybody had a color, and you had to mm -hmm. talk about that color. Right. And. So that was one way, but I don't know how that. I thought those were just things people wanted to do rather than right. connected to anything in particular. Well, I think that there, there was a two things. There were some things that were done specifically that Harry Hay was doing uh -huh. in the first one and some things that other people wanted to do, uh -huh. like, like with John Stowe doing something. Uh -huh. I think John, Jeff did a drawing something or another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever lead any workshops or, or do uh -huh. any activity that you had to do a lot of planning for or whatever. Seems like I did. I didn't have to do much planning for it. Uh -huh. 
Well, uh, being a teacher, you probably but, but could do it in your it, sleep. Yeah, right. And so, and part of it was, I felt like I was helping hold things together uh -huh. in some ways. Uh -huh. A kind of behind the scenes kind of thing. But, okay. Uh, I do remember something I felt like was really important. Those were the vision meetings. Now, I don't know about those. Tell me about that. And they were, they were the, they were the, it was like gay spirit visions. There was vision. And basically, we would get together, and I remember doing, one time we did it at the mountain, uh, and basically the, the, group, the group of us that were organizing the whole thing, we got together and we, we had a visioning session, which we basically, we, we meditated and we went to a vision as to what we wanted to see happening at the mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what were our outcomes? So we established outcomes and goals based on our visions and how can we make the visions collective of all the visions of the people that were there. Mm -hmm. And then how, how, would the, how would the conference be organized based on those visions? Mm -hmm. Did some of that come to pass? Is that, is that how, basically how people decided what would happen the next time and blah, blah, blah? And that's it's how supposed it, to be incremental. That's how it was planned okay. Okay. initially. Right. I don't see that happening now. What do you see happening now? I, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not that. It's not that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so what are, what are some of your favorite conference memories uh, that you have, just particularly um, in there, special times. There was a spring conference that there was a sweat lodge. Mm -hmm. That was the most incredible thing to me. Really? Yes. Uh, it was very, it was very powerful. The sweat lodge was mm -hmm. very powerful. Was what that a Peter Bearwalky one or? No, no, it was it was somebody else. Uh -huh. One of those native kind. Of people, uh -huh. but it was very good. It was done in a native way. Uh -huh. And I've been to Peter Bear Walk's uh, uh, sweat lodges, uh -huh. a couple of them. Uh, and so, so I experienced that. And those were some of the most powerful, uh, as far as religious experiences or spirit experiences uh -huh. that, that I had been through. Okay. We're doing the sweat lodges All right. with Peter. Uh, Okay. And one was at uh, Peter and Rocco's farm, uh -huh. and I have I, I have the, uh, the the list of people that were at that. Was that one of the vision things you think? No. No, it was just an event. They had yeah. him visit Peter there. Bear walks. Yeah. Okay. Was Raven there at that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the the other I, I remember those those endless. Uh, Heart circles. Heart circles. <laughs> but, but I remember the one that happened after Raven passed. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, it, 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 I, I felt like I was blocking something uh -huh. during that whole heart circle. And there were all these talks about Raven as, as like this god or something. Yeah. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't put up with it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the place that people were putting Raven, I said, this isn't Raven that you're talking about. Yeah. And Saint I just, Raven. Saint Raven, uh -huh. those kind of things. And I just, I, I, I didn't come back for like many years after that. Oh dear. Uh -huh. Interesting. Uh, then the, the thing that happened, yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about... Um, uh, the, gift, the gifting ceremonies were very powerful for me. Okay because I felt like this was a time in which people were giving to each other in a very personal kind of way. Uh -huh. And I felt like what we were honoring at that was uh, we were honoring the elders and we were honoring the, the new spirit that was coming through. Uh -huh. okay. and, and then when I came later, after I came back, after being with home for a while, I felt like that the whole ceremony was lost. It completely changed the meaning that was there. The gifting piece? Or the other gifting piece. Okay. And you felt like it had changed into just kind of a ritualized thing. It just became a bring a gift and give it and give it to somebody. Mm -hmm. And they were they were wrapped. Mm. And I said, you don't wrap the gifts. Mm -hmm. It's important to to see what the gifts are so you know what you're choosing. Mm -hmm. 
Because otherwise you're choosing something you don't even know what it is. I didn't realize that they were wrapped gifts. I thought they were on the altar the whole time or something. You know? Maybe just at the beginning. At the beginning they were. Yeah. But the last, it, when I went and they did it, it's like they were wrapped. And I said, I don't want to wrap. <laughs> I want to see what I'm getting. And then, uh, and then I found the order, because it used to be the elders went first, choosing a gift. Oh, really? Okay. Right. And that's how it started. The elders in the group went first to choose a gift, and then mm -hmm. the person told what the gift was about. Mm -hmm. And then it's or I did, the youngest got everything left behind, mm -hmm. because they were, they were the last. Yeah. But it was like all that had changed. It was like the intention behind the whole process was lost. Mm -hmm. Were, did, do you remember any of the gifts that you took up there in early conferences, um, or even one of them? I've, I've taken something as simple as a feather, mm -hmm. uh, I think I took a compass, mm -hmm. I took a drawing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. something, and I, I've, I've gotten some, those are the kind of things I've gotten. I did get a drawing, the, 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 I did get a painting by uh, Dwight Light. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I remember him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, t um, what you said that um, a while back that you were some of the things you did for the conference were the drawings for the flyers, and you were a small group leader. And do you remember any other roles that you did during, throughout the time that you? Um. Well, I, I created the box for the talking stick. Mm -hmm. Okay, I built How did that come about? I um, mean, who, who decided we needed a box? And well, that was, I think part of it was Raven. Uh -huh. uh, he hated the way people were handling the, the talking stick. Yeah. And that they weren't supposed to be t touching the feathers right. that were hanging off of it because you just don't touch the feathers. Okay. You hold the stick. And people were stroking the feathers, and I could just be seen cringing. <laughs> people did that. And people do that to this day. Oh, I know, I know. It's like, okay. It's not a pet. It's not a pet. It's, it's, a, it's a power object you're holding there. It's like, okay. And so it felt like that it needed to have a place to reside when it wasn't on the altar because it was just wrapped up in. In fact, it was wrapped up in a pillowcase off my bed. Oh, where, uh -huh. and it was like, uh, when I saw it, when I was presented with the the, the stick to make the box for it, there was my pillowcase. I said, I wonder what this pillowcase was. Because <laughs> so I was missing this pillowcase. So it was wrapping up the talking stick. It's like, it's where it was. Yeah. Uh, and so, so yeah, he, uh, uh, I, think, I think I volunteered to make the box. Okay. So that's how it came about. And was there a ceremony about, you know, here is the box? Oh, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, and okay. there, it was the, the ashes. Ashes were burned and uh -huh. sage, and it was all smudged in the whole, the whole. Oh, the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards for the box. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and for people that don't know about it, what is talk about the talk, talking stick? What the talking stick? Where did it come in from? And it, it wasn't at the first conference. Oh no no no! It's, it came from Peter Bearwalks. Okay, he brought it with him. Peter Bearwalks presented the uh, the the talking stick to the to the conference. Okay, as part of his well, he probably gave, he probably gave it to Raven. Too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And Raven was a student of Peter Bearwalks. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, and Peter Bearwalks is a let me get this straight. He's a Seminole Apache shaman. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to remember if before the official talking stick, if we used other things like batons or something to to as talking sticks before this Native American one came. I, I don't know. Seems like we had some method of there was going something. around. Right. I don't know. Could have been it could have been a pot holder or something. Right. Could have been something. If you're holding this you get to talk, <laughs> <That's> okay? <right. laughs> um okay. And so part part of from Peter we're getting all the work for the four directions because that comes from the pagan tradition too. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great deal of what that's from coming from. Okay. And then Peter was, uh, Peter did quite a bit with the fire and the, the, the fire, fire ceremonies. And uh, while we were doing conference kind of work, I know one time Peter was there managing the fire for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, so 
who's, who's this straight man who's there managing the fire for all these gay men. Yeah. And Peter got into a lot of angst with American uh, uh, Indian people because he was doing sweat lodges for gay men and, and mixed mixed sweat lodges with men and women, which weren't supposed to be done either. So mm -hmm. he was doing a number of things that mm -hmm. were kind of forbidden. I can't remember what happened with his relationship to the conference. Did it end when Dave, when Raven was killed? Yeah. And he just never came back and we never heard from him again? Right, right. Now I, uh, oh, this gets interesting. It's, of course, it's of part of your course, life. Of course, so it's, it's part of my life. It gets interesting. <laughs> so so when, when Peter, when Raven had passed, I met with Peter uh, and he was doing shamanic counseling. And doing some work. Where? Uh, he had an office up in Dunwoody. Oh, I, did, I thought he was from some other state. Or Sandy Springs. Oh, he lives in Florida, but he had an office up oh, there. Okay. Okay. Uh, John Stowe and I and Raven have been down to visit him in Florida. And that, that, was, that was an interesting trip. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I went to visit him and uh, there I had a from, from Raven, I had uh, a pair of native dance belts. There were, there were tassels that mm -hmm. hang from your belt. Mm -hmm. And so, so I gave him one uh, to basically say, show, show Peter that I wanted to share this part of Raven with you. Mm -hmm. And so, so I gave him one of the dance belts, mm -hmm. the tassels. Uh, and so I, 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 there's a little bit of communication, and then I didn't hear from him. And then we were going back up to the I was asked to do the opening ceremony a couple years ago uh, uh, with uh, Craig. Craig and I were kind of putting the, the opening ceremony together, and so I was looking at Peter Bearwalks. So I found him. He was in Germany doing uh, doing uh, American Indian uh, shamanic work with the Germans, mm -hmm. and he had he had told about his work with. Uh, a raven, uh, the raven, uh, the raven spirit clan. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. In America. Uh, did you know you were part of the raven spirit clan? <laughs> <laughs> well, interesting. Okay. So it's like, okay. He's still claiming connection with this. The in personal. The artwork that's going out. Yeah. Just renaming it. Huh. For his own benefit. Huh. Um, did you have any particularly memorable or favorite keynote speakers in all the times you've been? Uh, <clears throat> uh, you don't have to have had them, but if no, you did. No, no. Uh, Harry, Harry, and, Harry and James were pretty, pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. how, t go back and, and explain a little, if you will, about how you decided not to go back and what, why you went back eventually, and how do you decide whether to go to a conference or not? Did you, did you come to this thing about fall versus spring pretty early on? Or? Well, I found when I was going to the conferences, fall versus spring, when I, when I was going to the conferences, I was like feeling like I had to go on all this stuff, but I really didn't want to. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather just hang out with the guys. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed I enjoyed not being in a workshop, but just talking with people more so than being in the workshop. Mm -hmm. I was getting more out of it. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that the workshops that were getting way away from from dealing with the spirit, mm -hmm. and they were more into, I don't know, uh, I, but I didn't feel like that there, there, were, there was any much vision, yeah. <laughs> and there was much spirit involved with what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so I was getting more out of going to spring comp than just being able to hang with people and talk with people who were of like ilk. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So it was less structured and therefore more powerful. More powerful. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how would you decide in However, giving... I, I do know that the people needed the structure, especially if they're coming from the highly structured kind of world into you know, going toward this. But yeah. I didn't, I didn't come from that. Uh -huh. I came from a less structured. Yeah, <laughs> you were comfortable with that. Yeah. So, um, when was the last time you went to a conference? Was it quite a while back? Uh, it was, uh, I think, two years ago. 
Okay, and do you remember how you decided to go or why you would go back? Um, basically, <coughs> I was... Uh, I was I, I was told that it would be good for me to be there because of because I had been there at the very beginning and they were kind of wanting people who were there at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So okay. I showed up. Just loyal, out of loyalty to the cause. Yeah, and just kind of curious. Okay. Uh, and then I'd been there a couple of years before. I think that's two thousand four mm -hmm. when I went. Was that That's mm -hmm. 10 years ago. That's 10 years ago. No, no, it wasn't 10 years ago. I did go 2004. I think that was kind of like to recheck in to see mm -hmm. how things were. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty quiet during that whole time. And then I went back when Craig asked me to go to do opening ceremonies. Okay. And let's see. I'm day for that. What was your reaction to going back after having been not been there for a while? Um, he said, I felt like a lot was was missing a lot of the a lot of the it wasn't like you ever remembered it wasn't it. like I had remembered okay right. it wasn't I'm gonna wreck this paper do you have this paper it, it was 07 07 okay 07 when I uh, helped put together the opening ceremony with Craig and that was not the 20th anniversary I don't guess that's when I went back recently can't remember when that was might have been there. I, th I think. When was the first one? What was the date? That was 90. 90. So. Maybe this was. Maybe it was 10. Okay. Well, um, so it, nowadays, do you think about it each year? Yes, no, or do you? Is it something you graduated from, or something that you're you're just think is not what it was and well, I don't I don't get out of it what I used to get out of it. Okay. And what happened was in those interim years I started uh, I went uh, with the uh, uh, the wildlife group, the, the the hiking and camping group, gay men's the Wilderness, Wilderness Network, Network of Georgia. Yeah. And what I would do is like in the fall I would go to Sapple Island in and just hang with that group, and I got more as much out of that as I was out of the out of the conference. Well, that's interesting because I would, I would I'm surprised that there would be that kind of. Oh, it wasn't the men that were there. Oh, it's it the, was one. Uh, there were a couple of men I would connect with, and that was great. Uh, but it was mostly just being out in the middle of the, nature was my spirit. Okay. Yeah, and that's where my vision and spirit come from. Oh, okay. Let's see. Interesting. Okay. Um, do you happen to know how um, Raven met with Peter Bearwalk? Do you know how he connected with him? No. No? Okay. Um, I don't. But good question. <laughs> Just know it. So I'm not sure I, have, I know how to ask this next question. The question has to do with how GSV is different from other gay organizations that you might be part of or have been part of. But it sounds like it depends on when you're talking about GSV is how it would be different or not different. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and for me right now, GSV is the is the potlucks are more more part of what my life is about rather than the than the, the conference. Okay. Uh, and it's just a way of getting around other men mm -hmm. and, and, and enjoying their company. Okay. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah. All right. By the way, did you ever have a fairy name uh, like the ravens of the world? Right. It was, it was kind of like you know, rain tree instead of rain D. It's rain tree. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't, I didn't get that memo. <laughs> no, it never went out. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't leave the pad. <laughs> okay. All right. But I, I think my name is signed some uh, in some of the RFD things. It's probably signed Rain Tree. Oh really? Okay. Well, that will help my me name. figure okay. that out. I see that. 
Okay. Um, all right, so here are the people that who, who have died, and we want you to talk about one or two or however many you want to talk about. Um, there's the names again so that right. you don't just... Yeah, I went through them. If I could. Okay. Um, what, the reason we're asking this question is because we can't ask them, right. and we want to give a sense of people who knew them and what they were like and what you remember in particular about them. If possible, a, you know, a particular memory. But if not a particular memory, just uh, whatever you would have to say about them, why you remember them more vividly than somebody else. And you can pick as many as you want because we need, we're just going to ask everybody this and maybe we can have a composite. Well, yeah, I was wondering if there are any that you don't have much information on. Well, we, or, you're, well, well, you. Leon Lashner I can talk about. Talk about that I can person. talk about Crazy Al. Uh, talk about John Stowe. I can talk about uh, Raven. I knew Bill McNeely a little bit, but other people knew him better. Um, I knew Ivan Bailey, uh, Terry Barfield, uh, Leon, I'll talk about Leon. Okay. Uh, Leon, uh, when I was, uh, when I was HIV, when I became HIV positive and found that out, basically it's having a team around me basically to support me. Mm -hmm. And so John Stowe was my massage therapist. And so, so he, Part of it, I guess it was through him that I met Leon, uh, and Leon's a chiropractor, and so Leon and, and, and John were basically my main, uh, when you're hooking spirit and the physical up together, they were my go-to people mm -hmm. to basically make that happen and make me feel the body and the, the, the spirit were complete, mm -hmm. was, through, uh, was through John Stowe and, and Leon. Uh, and we ended up uh, doing, a, we went on trips together and we were going to the, uh, to visit a friend of Leon's, a Dominic Sire. Mm -hmm. have, have you heard that name? Mm -hmm. Dominic, Is that a woman or a man? A woman. Okay. A woman. Dominic Sire was doing these incredible body, body mind, spirit workshops mm -hmm. and basically three of us sponsored her and organized these workshops for, uh, for her to do with people. And there was one on passion, there was a warrior workshop, there was a heart workshop, there were these, there was the most intensive spiritual kind of body workshops that I've ever been a part of. Uh, Dominique, is in, she's an incredible kind of uh, person in, in, the, in the work she was doing, is just fantastic. Uh, Where did you go to uh, this? We or did she come here? She came here. Uh -huh. We brought her here and then uh, sold, sold, you know, sold you know, uh, got people to come to it and organize the things. I would bring the tea and the coffee and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. and we basically uh, got spaces. We did it. We did it at the Candle Park Yoga Studio. We did it at the uh, at the uh, the uh, Cerebral Policy Center. Mm -hmm. We did it at the uh, uh, the uh, the Atlanta Massage School. We did it at various places and locations mm -hmm. where we could have spaces for people to be there because it's an all weekend mm -hmm. work. Was it HIV positive folks or no. anybody who anybody. bought a ticket? Male, female, uh -huh. all over the place. Met some incredible, incredible people there in the process of doing this. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so Leon was part of that and Leon was a really incredible support for me when I was going through this whole process. Was he from Atlanta? Uh, uh, I mean was yes, he living yes. in Atlanta? Okay. Uh, his parents are from here. Mm -hmm. But he had been doing some work, I think, in Boston. Mm -hmm. And then later, uh, after John died, uh, uh, he was doing work. He had a practice here and he had a practice in Boston. Once a month, he would fly up to Boston and see people there. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And so, uh, uh, Liam was just bringing something, something to, the, to the work that he was doing that I couldn't find with anybody else. Mm -hmm. Do you have a particular story about him that you met a story about Leon? Uh, oh, he was he was he was trying to figure out how to uh, how to make some additional income. So, because his chiropractor, he 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 had a business, he had an office, but then 
he wasn't getting enough business through his office to basically support his office, so he started doing some things, some work through his home. Uh, and he was trying to come up with some schemes in order to, to do some more, get some other income. So he had this, 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 this idea to make uh, coconut oil ice cream. Uh, and he, had, he, was, he was constantly trying to invite people over to try out his new formulas. Uh, for the ice cream with all these different kind of flavors and so on. He'd, he'd set us all up on his bar and his counter and we, we would test all these different flavors that he was coming up with. And it was like, it was, it was good, but yeah. it's like, okay, now how are you going to produce this and who's going to make it and where are you going to sell it? Right. Well, he says he thinks he's got Whole Foods here to, and, and maybe Jake's will be doing it. And so he was lining up all these things. And uh, I, I think other people started producing it before he could even get off the ground or yeah. anything yeah. like this. But it was like, you're, you're, you're a chiropractor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, okay. and one, one or two memorable stories about Raven. Uh, Did y'all ever have a, get into a huge disagreement, except for example? Do you remember that? Where y'all were at odds with each other for a few mm -hmm. days or whatever? Well, well I, I, I do remember it's like, uh, I, I questioned some things he was doing, okay, and it was like, well, really, Raven? And so he was, he, he was very much intrigued with uh, Japanese pillow books. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. News? Uh, <laughs> this is news. <laughs> right. Okay. Right, especially with young men in them. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, Raven, this... You don't need this, you know, please. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I just, I couldn't, I could not understand where this was coming from uh -huh. at all. Uh -huh. I really could not. <laughs> okay, I okay. want to hear about some of these other people too that you <laughs> say um, you knew. Well, John Stowe, talk about John. What kind of person he was. Um, uh, John, uh, John, I remember one time we were up in the mountain, in the Rocky Mountains, Leah and John and I, and we were we were driving down this road, and John said, "Stop, stop!" I said, what is it? He "Said I've got to get out." I said, "Okay," and so he got out. He he had a little vial of, of I guess alcohol or whatever it was. He collects his essences, and he went over to this bush <laughs> to collect the essence of this bush. Yeah. It was growing there on the side of the road, and he just put it, put the, put the vial there, and opened it up and co to collect the essence of the bush. Uh -huh. And then after a while, he capped it and said, "This is perfect. I need this. <laughs> this is <laughs> Mr. Oils." <laughs> yes. Uh, and Terry Barfield is somebody um, I'd like for you to just try to describe him because I don't. I don't remember him being part of the conferences after the first couple. No. But, um, but his, um, it might have been because he died, not because of any other reason. But he was an interesting person. You yes. probably knew him a lot better than I did. Y'all well, were looking for a house together, so, at one point. Yeah. Um. um and he, he was pretty, pretty organized and pretty kind of. Uh, it's so long ago. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, I just say he's he's a lot more organized than I was. <laughs> I've never been one about being organized or anything. Uh, yeah. But been a lot more structured, and a lot more things had to be a certain way. Uh -huh. kind of person. Right. Uh, I do remember looking at a house and he was saying this is, the floor is too slanted in here. It's like he was looking at all these the, 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 these things. Oh, he was looking at all the negative stuff. I said, but look look at the space. Look at the, look how the walls. These are probably from the 1800s. You know, just getting all excited about this. Uh -huh. He said, but look, there's a crack here. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Rather anal detentive there. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> And Bill Manili, 
Bill Manili, I was I was not around him a whole lot, but I was around people who were, mm -hmm. uh, and just 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 one of the nicest nicest guys, really. Yeah, I didn't have much experience. Now, Crazy Al is one. Oh yeah, please talk about Crazy Al. Uh, Crazy Al, and I guess. Did you know him through Running Water or, or Short Mountain before he moved here? He lived here, right? Right, he lived here. I knew him when he lived here. Okay. Uh, Out on Flat Shoals. On Flat Shoals. Yeah, In the I middle go, of that I weird... go there about probably once a week. I go really? Out, probably once a week. I go visit Crazy Al. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And we would just hang together and he would eat his mash of stuff that he, he probably urinated into. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He was eat, drinking his urine too and trying me to get it and said, no, I'm not going to go up there crazy. Uh -huh. No, Al. Uh, so, so I would be sharing the NLP stuff that I was getting and he was sharing with me the Chinese medicine ideas and then we were talking about how they were, we were talking about writing a book together about uh -huh. how our pamphlets about how NLP and Chinese medicine were just one and the same. Uh -huh. uh, and so then he would do work on me. Uh, and then sometimes I do work on him using NLP stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember him doing the, uh, he had a dragon garden that he put out. Uh, now you've got to, got to know about this land that he's on. He's squatting. It's, it's old, there's an old house that's abandoned. Behind the house there was a, a chicken house. Okay. He lived in the chicken house. Okay. And he had, he had, he had basically uh, insulated one portion of it, the front portion of it, and that's kind of where he lived. And then the other part, during the winter, that's it's good for refrigeration because it was just outside. And he's like that. And he did canning of this, this kind of soy mush stuff that he would eat. And he said it was the most powerful stuff you could be eating. And it would refresh you and do all this stuff to you. I never ate it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he would talk about it. But, but yeah, he would do... Uh, now, I was trying to remember if he lived, lived with somebody out there, or maybe people just transiently Oh, there were people all, all the time coming through. Yeah. And I met, I remember one time I was there, and I ended up uh, meeting a, uh, a shaman who's, he was a, he was a uh, urban shaman. So his, uh, his totem animal was the rat. Mm. Okay, because if you're going to be in the urban setting, you need to have uh, an animal that's friendly to your setting. So mm -hmm. he, his, his shaman was a rat. His okay. totem was a, a rat. His, okay. his guiding animal was a rat. And then with him was uh, this woman that he was seeing, and she was a changeling. Mm. Uh, so she was, uh, I'm not sure how it goes, but uh, she was in somebody else's body. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. So, so the body that she was inhabiting was not her own body. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is an interesting. <laughs> yes. So, is it true that he came here from the mountains up in there somewhere? I mean, he didn't. He wasn't. He wasn't a resident of Running Water or or um, no. any of those sanctuaries. No. Uh, but he, he just went there a lot, I guess. Right, he went there, and I think he was part of a commune up in Virginia for a while. Oh, okay. And I think that's where he ended up. Oh, all right. Too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and uh, there, I, I went on the internet not long ago, and there were still some writings of his on the internet. Really? Okay. And I found from Crazy Al. Oh. So Crazy Al was, she was just, I just, I thought he was the most wonderful person. Well, he was very sweet. He was very sweet mm -hmm. and very, he reminded me of, when I was growing up, there were all these, always these women next door that were the most incredible people. Not, not where I was living, but I was next door. Mm -hmm. Next door to my grandmother, Mimi, uh, there was Ms. McLean. And Ms. McLean was the most incredible woman. Uh, she lived by herself. I think her husband passed away when he was in his 30s or something, but she was always this She's a powerful woman. She just took care of herself. She had her own garden. She did her own work. She, she, she never took care of her house. My grandmother would not even go next door. And she said, it's filthy over there. Mm -hmm. I would go visit her. Uh, and whenever Miss McLean sent uh, food over to my grandmother, she said, I'm going to eat this. I don't know if she's washed it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's been cooked. She still wouldn't wash it. She, yeah. said, she said, no, I'll feed it to the chickens. So... <laughs> So there was wonderful Ms. McLean, and Ms. McLean would show me things and do things to me, do gardening things to me. She had a 
she had a garden that was about this big and it was all sand and she had all of her elephant ears planted. She said, this is my sand garden. Mm -hmm. And just like, and she's crazy and wonderful. And next door to my other grandmother was my great aunt Harriet and she was crazy too. And nobody liked her, but I thought she was the most wonderful person I knew because everybody thought she had a big temper, but she never showed her temper at me. Mm -hmm. So she would show me things and do me things and show me how to sew and show me how to do things, take me on little trips up in the mountains and do all this wonderful stuff with me. So crazy, that was like a reincarnation she, of, uh, of Miss McLean, uh, yeah. Mildred, who lived next door where I, where I lived, and then, uh, uh, and then Aunt Harriet. Mildred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, is there any way you can generalize about how important or unimportant or tangential or central GSV, the whole GSV thing well, was well, for you? I or see, for is me, it just part of a fabric that's bigger? I than think that? Fa fabric is good. And fabric is, is fabric of my life. And I'm a couple of those threads that run through that fabric. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's not all my life, but it's a great deal of my life. Mm -hmm. I was a lot of the, the men that I've shared my life with come from GSV, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of my life kind of uh, it, it's it's modeled with and modeled by GSV, mm -hmm. and uh, for a long time there it was like that was my community. I mm -hmm. felt like until Raven died, that was my that was my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with Raven passing, it just I had to find another family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Have you ever, do you remember ever um, recommending that somebody go to GSV mm -hmm. and, and w what you said to them about it? Well, uh, and then what the, the were the circumstances? Of, the of people, it's like uh, people who felt like they didn't belong mm -hmm. in, in the gay culture that was around here. And I said, well, there, there's another gay culture you might want to find out about, mm -hmm. and it's GSV. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was it was uh, it was like the fairy the fairy circle in the GSV was like, okay, this is more who I am than what I've been experiencing in these other ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt about the radical fairy group first. I mean, yes. that, okay, here's my tribe finally. Well, I know finally there's a group of people that that think the same way I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Um, okay. Well. That's most of the questions, and so we want to be sure that we've gotten around to touching on whatever you think people sh should know 50 years from now about GSV, what it was, why it was powerful or not for you. Mm -hmm. So what didn't we cover that you thought we might? Well, I think what, it was, what the power for me was, was acknowledging that Hey, I can believe what I do believe, and I can be gay and believe this. Mm -hmm. And there's a group of men here who have similar kind of leanings that I can talk with, and that I can be part of, and I can touch them, and I can hold them. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, anything else you would like to record, say, or remember anybody in particular that you want to be sure gets into the GSV mall if, it, if somebody is um, uh, researching it you know like who we should talk to who, who should we do oral history interviews for for sure mm -hmm. who, who do you think we should put on our list because they were crucial to right what done Andrew okay I think Andrew's important okay Right. That would be the main, main one that comes to my mind. Okay. okay. You might want to talk to Jeff Glauser. I was going to ask you about him. He was part of all this, yes, right? Yes, he was. The whole... Uh, uh, for the Radical Fairies on, on through. Yeah, okay. Mm How -hmm. do you spell his last name? G-L-A-U-S-E-R. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember if he's on our spreadsheet of people who've registered in the past, but he was part of it. you know how to get in touch with him? Yeah. Well, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. So, I don't know that I had his... I don't, he doesn't do email, does he? He doesn't do much of anything. 
He doesn't do electronic things. Let me see the him on this phone. No. He doesn't have a cell phone either, probably. Oh, I think he probably does. Uh -huh. Okay. Does he still live in... He lives on Hemlock in Ormwood. Okay. Where he's lived all these years. Right. Okay. Well, after he's split up from uh, Schmuck. From Linwood. From Linwood. Mm -hmm. uh, I see his name on this list. Who's Linwood? Linwood was, was Jeff's partner for many years. But they split up years and years ago. Mm -hmm. Linwood moved to California. And he never got over him. Jeff never got over Linwood? No. Gary Cotman. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Primo interviewee. Huh? Okay. We need to interview him for sure, yeah. Yeah. I think Gary would be good. That, that's, that's another whole story. Well, if you can find well, his contact you information, did... send, it, yeah, send, it, send it to us. Who? Jeff? Yeah. 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 Um, and Franklin still sees Jeff too, so I, right. You know, I yeah, his phone number. Or something. Right, I've got his phone number somewhere. Uh, and he and I, uh, he, I, and Pat Kerner were kind of like, we were like the Three Musketeers, the three of us were. And a pencil, pencil woman, uh, and an art teacher too. Mm -hmm. I work with her. Guys. Oh, that's right. You know Pat. And so the three of us were like uh, the Three Musketeers, hanging out with each other. Mm -hmm. And then then Jeff and Pat, Jeff had some kind of something with Pat, and he never let Pat know what it was, but he didn't, he told me, he said, you either choose Pat or you choose me. Yeah. And so, oh, I chose dear. Pat. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. So, and then, and then, then we would, oh, okay, I'm leaving, I'm leaving this. With, uh, okay. Um, uh, and, yeah, so, so I, I talk with him just, just very seldom, mm -hmm. even though he lives close to me. Mm -hmm. Are there GSV-ish persons who live in East Atlanta besides you now that Wayne has moved and Jeff is there still? Well, uh, one thing you did, the neighbors? started, I think I have this list, uh, started an East Atlanta Gay and Lesbian Ensemble, ah. Eagle, a number of years ago, and uh, I found, found that initial list. Of all the people that were on that. Let's see, oh, Max. I did want to talk about Max. I want you to talk about Max. Okay, I want to talk about Max real quick. That's one person I was going to come back to. Um, no, these were the people a number of years ago when we started this group. Brooks Garcia. Okay, they were part of, part of this group. Yeah. Is Brooks still around? I have no idea. Okay. All right. Mr. Max. Yeah. You knew him through the fairy circle originally. I knew through the fairy circle and then through gardening and then, then we, we kind of hung out with each other a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he would have these bouts of kind of depression that he'd go through. Yes. Uh, and uh, he, he would separate himself from other people and just kind of close off and just not want to be, have anything to do with anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I acknowledged and said, okay, when he disappears, I know he'll reappear, and that's when, when we can start doing some things together. Mm -hmm. And so he was, I was, had been going through a bout. He was talking about wanting to move to Asheville. And knowing him, he'd just get up and move to Asheville and not tell anybody, because mm -hmm. that's kind of the way he was. Mm -hmm. And so he... Um, uh, so I was at a flea market, and uh, I, there was a painting that I had done in the flea market. It was a Scott Antique show, mm -hmm. and there, um, then I asked, and th this painting uh, Max had bought from me. And so I asked the guy, I said, how did you get this painting? He says, oh, I bought a storage shed that somebody stopped paying on. And this was in it. 
And I said, okay. So I, I bought it back. Uh, and then I went over to see Max, and the, the truck wasn't there, and the, the house was locked, and nobody was answering the door. And I went to the neighbor to ask if they knew what happened, and they said no, they hadn't seen him. I said, what about his dogs? He had two dogs. And they said they hadn't seen the dogs either. So I said, well, he must have moved. And not leaving. then I tried to, tried to Google him, find an address in Asheville, and couldn't find anything. And so then about a month later, I got a call from the coroner's office. And they said that the neighbor had gone to the house and checked in the back door and found him in his bed. Mm -hmm. And he'd been dead mm -hmm. for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And then, then I was going through some of my papers about the same time, and I found a letter from Max saying, do not, do not open until my death. Really? Oh, what was that? I said, well, I said, oh, I forgot I even had this thing, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm glad I found it when I did. So I opened it up, and it was this, it was his last will and testament, and it was listing me as his uh, executor. So I got to find out I was executor for his estate. And it's like so then, now. I now it was like dealing with uh, his cremation and depositing of the the ashes and dealing with all of his his things, and then the house was mine. So I inherited the house. Oh, wow! When was this? This was. About, about five years ago, uh -huh. maybe. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And what is his last name? Clore. Clore. Yeah. He's a very unusual person. Very unusual person. Uh, from Roanoke. Yes, from Roanoke. And see, two women were also in the, in the estate, and they were both from Roanoke. And I, I did, all I knew were their names. I had no addresses or anything oh, from them. So oh I had gosh. to track them down. One had moved to Virginia Beach. Uh -huh. And so it's like, all this contact with these two women from his past. Uh -huh. oh. So I, I ended up settling his estate, and I did uh, I did an art installation of, of the whole process of going through this, like uh, the seven stations of wax. <laughs> oh, all right. That well, that was in the E Church, wasn't it? No. Uh, this was at that was uh, Raven Sylvia. stuff. Raven stuff. That was another whole thing. Oh, okay. Okay, and I, I but I, I think one of the things. I put in here was a list of all the work that was on exhibit. Oh, Just that's part of that. Okay. It's part of that exhibit. Okay. And the, Jeff, Jeff Glauser and I put that together. He did mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. He did the work for that. Mm -hmm. uh, when Raven passed, I ended up getting all of his pictures. And I had his artwork. And so basically, I, I basically was transferring the artwork to GSV by doing an exhibit and trying to sell them to get scholarship money, and I have no idea what happened to the work after that, mm. where they ended up. Because any unsold work uh, went to GSB. Oh. But, me, and who, who was that person in GSB who took them? I mean, where did you uh, take them to? Do you remember? Uh, was it, it was, Al? It was, no, no. It was put in the storage shed over... Uh, where GSV had a, a, a storage shed. I didn't know they had a storage shed. Okay. At that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, the, so that was that was the strange <coughs> Max yeah. story. Do you have any memories of, of interacting with him at the mountain? I don't either. I don't <laughs> no. I, don't, I mean, I I'm, didn't even remember me being. I, at the maybe mountain. he never came to the mountain. Mm -hmm. But he might be, he might have. Um, yeah, he did. I saw his name on the roster. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was. Was he here? He wasn't at this one. He was at another one. This is okay. Done unless you're Good. not done. No, I feel like we covered quite a bit. Okay.